morning. Our scripture reading is from the Gospel of Luke, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 7, the parable of the lost sheep. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Here is the reading from the Gospel this morning. May God grant God's blessing in our hearing. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Personally, and I suspect some of you as well, love the lyrics from the entire hymn which begin, Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. There is something very uplifting that I feel inside each time I hear those heavenly words. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. And then continuing, hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Isn't that a beautiful image? Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. There certainly is much sin and sadness that we each experience in our lives. It is most comforting to know, however, that our faith can help drive the dark of doubt away. We could certainly have used those words these past few months, weeks, and days with our political environment and our environmental environment, with all that has been going on in our country and the world to cast concerns. It just seemed each day expressed more negativity than the day before. Then the verse, first verse concludes with such words of hope and joy. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. God, the giver of immortal gladness, immortal joy, and the immortal life of hope. That's what we receive from our faith in the one who gives us life and ultimately immortal and eternal life. Each Monday morning, I begin my week of preparation in my half-reclined, dark brown lazy boy chair, looking for some inspirational message that I can share for the upcoming Sunday. This week, as happens from time to time, I receive my inspiration 
from one of my daily devotionals that I saved from a while back. Let me share this devotional from the UCC Daily Devotional entitled Dancing by the Reverend Eric Anderson. His words inspired me to think of the joy that God brings and hence began this morning's message with joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Reverend Anderson's devotional goes like this. The rain bucketed down, an unwelcome sight at summer camp on a Thursday afternoon. Campers and counselors alike watched it sadly from beneath streaming roofs. Except, except for a pair of summer staffers dancing in the rain. Spray leaped from the water pool beneath their feet. Droplets flew from their outstretched fingers as their arms whirled in the downpour. They leaped and glided, laughed and sang, soaking faces aglow with delight. Why aren't we dancing, Reverend Anderson asks. We are made for dancing, for exalting, for joy. Amidst the evil in the world, in faith, we Christians know this magnificent reality above all else. God so loved the world. God so loved the world. God so loved the world. Given such love, however, and why ever, do we keep ourselves from dancing through the days? We face sorrows and disappointments, labors and obligations, tragedies and traumas. Each day we find ourselves caught between leaky faucets and laundry. We need healing. People need us. We need to fulfill our callings. Where is the time or energy for dancing in the rain? After some whirls and pirouettes, the two young people seized brooms to push the pooling water off the streaming deck in a futile race against the downpour. Futile, perhaps, but still dancing, still joyful. They seized the time. Let me repeat, they seized the time. Joy is the wellspring of discipleship. The life of faith flows from our joy. We learn how much God loves us, how much God loves those around us. That love bursts forth in smiles and giggles and embraces and in joyous work. Perhaps our joy will even prompt a dancing step or two along the way. How could it not? The Reverend Anderson concludes his daily devotional with the following prayer. With the tenderness of hula, with the exuberance of hip-hop, with the serenity of ballet, O oh God, let us dance. Amen. O oh God, let us dance. O oh God, let us dance. There are days, however, especially as we age, that dancing can become more difficult. More difficult if we fail to call on the one who created us. Yes, dancing is more difficult now. At least, certainly, the physical act of dancing. We, we do not all have the energy 
nor do we all have the knees or the feet or the backs we once had years ago when we could dance forever. Forgive me for this little slide back down memory lane. I remember back in eighth grade in 1960 and 61 and our dances at the Marlboro Central School in New Jersey. I don't think I ever sat down for that hour and a half. I danced and I danced and I danced. I did the twist to Chubby Checker. My mom taught me how to waltz, so I remember the slow dances to songs like Kathy's Clown by the Everly Brothers and Teen Angel by Mark Dinning. I have absolutely no clue how we all dance to that generational classic by Lonnie Donegan. Does your chewing gum lose its flavor on the bedpost overnight? Does your mother say don't chew it? Do you swallow it in spite? Can you catch it on your tonsils and heave it left and right? Does your chewing gum lose its flavor on the bedpost overnight? I assume some of you remember that classic. There is joy. Yes, there is joy in those words that bring a smile to our faces. Joy in those silly lyrics. But it was a 1958 song by Danny and the Juniors that I remember most. Dancing to the hop with a girl named Sue. Dance after dance after dance. As a small side note, the next year Sue and I were freshmen at a very, very large regional high school in Freehold, New Jersey. And Sue became a cheerleader and was with the in crowd. I joined the chess club and, well, not quite the in, in crowd, but I was good at je chess. In high school hallways, Sue would walk by me without, even, without ever a hello or even a glance. But I was good at chess. There was a joy at those dances as an early teenager in middle school. A naive, very naive joy. But it was a joy. A joy of the limitless hope and opportunity. However, it was a, na a naive joy without the awareness of God's place in joy and hope of the dance that has come to me in later years. Now I see, and I think we all here this morning see, that the dance in Reverend Anderson's little message is really about the dance of life. It is the dance that Garth Brooks sang about. I could have missed the pain, but I'd have to miss the dance. Indeed, we all could have missed much, not all, but a lot of the pain in our lives the pain from the losses we have all experienced with the loss of someone we have loved, a parent, a spouse, a child, a sibling, a close friend. God could have made the world so that we would not have had that overwhelming pain of loss. God could have made the world to protect us against that pain. But there would be a price, a very heavy price. That price would be the unspeakable price of never having had the chance to dance in our lives 
with those we loved and shared our joy. The dance we speak of is a metaphor for life. Yes, I could have missed the pain, but I'd have to miss the dance. I could have missed the pain, but I would have had to, I would have missed the love of my mom and dad, my sister, my niece, many friends, and of course, most of course, missed the joy of Jane in my life. Each of you know the pain you paid for the loss of a loved one. That pain was because you found joy with that person and love with that person. And now that love and joy is only in our memories. But those memories help sustain us through the difficult times we still face. The dance we speak of is the dance of joy sung, sung of in that hymn. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. The joy of dancing in God's world. The Bible is filled with messages of joy and dancing. Laced throughout Jeremiah's prophetic warnings are promises that returning to God shall lead to divine blessings and that God will ultimately honor his covenant with the Jewish people. About 2,700 years ago, the prophet Jeremiah wrote, They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. And what is the message that I hope and pray you take with you as you leave our home of Christian worship this morning? That message is that because of the sacrifice Christ made on the cross, no matter what problems we may face in this world, there are two certainties we know. First, God is always, always with us in our trials as well as in our dancing in this life. Second, no matter the problems we face each day, all of us who maintain our faith will ultimately share in the eternal dance of glory and joy with the loved ones who passed with us through this life and with our everlasting, ever-loving Creator. Amen.
now for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.